Hello everyone, my name is Malik L. Train. I'm the host of Health Awareness Talk. Today I'm welcoming back Arn Palm Master Dale Dugas. Um, we're reviewing his website, it's Dale Dugas Chinese Herbs and Dit Dao Jiao. And the reason that we're doing it is because I want to, uh, for all the athletes and people out there who are physical enthusiasts, fitness enthusiasts, I want you to learn how to uh, use the information that's listed on this website in order to make you a better athlete. Hello, Dale. How you doing? Doing good. How are you doing, my friend? Oh, just fine. Thank you. You breaking any coconuts lately? No, no. It's, it's a little bit, it's winter down here. So winter time, I don't do a lot of breaking. Okay. Um, I do that when it's warmer out because uh, even down here in Florida, it can get a little chilly and cold, you know, uh, makes things, you know, feel a hell of a lot denser than they are actually. <laughs> in the summertime when it's warm out, you, you don't really think about it, you know, but really up when I was up in the Northeast, when I was in, you know, I'm from Massachusetts. So in one of those videos, you can see the snow banks behind me mm -hmm, and I'm mm -hmm. outside breaking and I'm, when I hit it, I'm like, ah, I felt it. You know, because it was cold outside. You know, but you don't. You just do it. It's showmanship. You you want to show what you can do if you can do something. So, you know. But down here in Florida, yeah, it's a little different. Yeah, it's a little different. It's eighty degrees down there, right? Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. You know, I apologize. I I did move down here for you know this amongst other reasons, but you know, I'm, I am, I am enjoying. I am enjoying the weather. Uh, yeah, I bet you are. Indubitably, indubitably. I got a, a person, um, Fred Jones. I have a athlete individual who lives down there. He might be watching this video today. Get in contact with you. We'll see. That'd be great. You know, please let me know how I can be of service to anybody who's interested in learning more about how to deal with you know, health issues using, you know, Chinese herbal medicine. Yeah, health issues, but like I said, the reason we're here today is how to make your, how to become a better athlete using this information. Yeah. And um, it was like, it's a lot of things I know about, but I was looking at this stuff and I was like, I was scratching my head. It's like the lingo and different stuff I just didn't know about. So we're going to uh, just jump back, jump into this. Uh, your best sellers, uh, Dit Dao Jiao. First of all, let us know again for those people who didn't watch uh, one of the other videos. What is a Dit Dao Jiao? Now, Dit Dao Jiao is Cantonese. Dit Da, Dit means mm. to fall. Mm -hmm. You know, fall down. Da means strike. So dit da means fall and strike. In other words, you, you've got trauma. You've had an accident. You've been injured somehow. You've been bumped or bruised. Jiao, the last word, is the Cantonese word for alcohol. So basically, mm -hmm. the transliteration is fall, strike, liquor. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make any sense. So we call it bruise liniment or trauma liniment because, you know, you've got some kind of trauma and it's a liquid that you're rubbing on your injuries. Mm -hmm. So in the West, we call it, you know, bruise liniment, trauma liniment, you know, bruised medicine. Uh, but the, the, the Cantonese word is dit da jiao. Now, sometimes you might hear the Mandarin. The Mandarin is tie ta ju. It's a little different. Mm -hmm. It's the same characters in Chinese. It's just in the North, they, they pronounce it tie ta ju. And in the South, it's dit da jiao. Mm -hmm. So just a different, different, like, Di uh, sorry, it's a different dialect of Chinese, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you know that's the, that's the only difference. It's the same thing, and there's formulas famous in the north, there's formulas famous in the south. Mm -hmm. So if you hear the word dit da jiao, it, they're talking about this liquid you use for, you know, training and conditioning, for bruises, for you know injuries. Uh, some people put it on, you know, before they just before they get on the computer and blog or do their coding or programming. So sometimes it's not for injuries. It's actually just to keep your hands healthy and keep the circulation up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of, when you, I'm sorry. It's a lot of times with these wild, wide receivers and uh, people who play football and stuff or basketball. Their hands is like their number one thing. So yeah. learning how to use the different um, herbal liniments and stuff out there, and also the better grade ones, or having someone custom make them something just for them. Is yes. something that it helped them to keep their hands for a lot longer period of time and to keep them healthy. Yes, hand health is very important for anybody who uses their hands for a living. It does, you know. Of course, we're talking more sports, you know, application here. But look across the wide section of people who do work. You've got people that use their hands every day. So, you know, athletes, yes, of course. You know, but anybody, anybody who uses their hands for mm -hmm, any reason, mm -hmm. you know, you want to make sure that your hands are not injured because if your hands are injured, you're not working. You know, you, you have a problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, 
you know, yeah, anybody, anybody in football, basketball, even hockey, because you know they're gripping, they're gripping sticks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm oh, sorry, my my light was flicking here. Sorry mm -hmm. about that. It's okay. So anybody holding a stick, a baseball bat, you know, uh, again, you know, hand health. It uh, it all comes down to hand health and what you can do. And Dit Dajo is a great adjunct, you know, to use before or after your training or before or after any kind of game or match because it's going to make sure that you've got you know circulation running to your hands, you know, throughout the period of the game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not in any band list. It's uh, the ingredients are mostly just herbs, leaves, bark. You know, and then boiled in some kind of wine or set, they take the herbs and, and soak them in some kind of alcohol. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's rice wine, sometimes it's whiskey, sometimes it's vodka, sometimes it's just regular wine. Mm -hmm. And then they take the herbs out, take the liquid, and then that liquid is then, you know, used as this, you know, pain liniment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. So now we look at the dead dows, or that help to strengthen the uh, tendons and ligaments of hand increase circulation get rid of the bruising the clots yep. and stuff like that and um, not only uh, it can help you to increase your strike so when you're pushing someone maybe even pushing the ball because your muscles and stuff are yep. recovering at a high rate but also uh, a lot of football players and a lot of basketball or hockey uh, you work on something called arm body so this very same liniment helps to uh, strengthen the fascia or helps to strengthen your body ability to be able to tolerate uh, getting hit and all that other yeah. type of stuff, which is also a big thing. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, the iron body training is a, is a body of material where you're trying to develop the body to take more abuse than what normally is, you know, seen. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times what you're doing is you're developing the fascia, and, and many times in many systems, they're using stress or pressure. They're slapping or hitting their body, hitting into the torso, hitting on the legs, you know, striking into the face, you put stress into tissue and bone over time, they are both going to remodel, they're going to get stronger. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when you're doing this kind of training, this percussive training, you know, you might injure yourself. Why? You get a little too gung-ho and you hit yourself too many times. You know, some people will graduate to using um, tools wooden sticks, mm -hmm. you know, bundles of chopsticks where they're hitting their body. Well, you, when you use an implement, you might get some bruising that's, you know, a little more severe than if you were using your hands. You always want to ensure you don't want to hurt yourself. So after you've done your training, this, you know, hit training or this abuse or stress training, you could call it anything you want. You're basically putting stress on your tissues and bones. After you've done this training, you would take liquid, the training liquid, you know, the medicinal liniment, the bruise liniment and put that on your arms. If you've got bruising somewhere, you can put that on the bruise. Okay? But I don't hit my torso as much as I hit my arms and legs much more because, you know, in your sport, you're usually going to make contact with people with your arms and hands or your legs. Mm -hmm. You know, you could be using, you know, like soccer, football, you know, uh, European football, mm -hmm. where you're mm -hmm. using your legs to, you know, play the game and your mm -hmm. legs are going to come into contact with other people via the ball because you're all kicking at the ball. Mm -hmm. Well, what if the guy kicks you in the shin? Well, you got shin guards on, but it still smarts like a son of a gun. <laughs> so anybody in soccer could, could use the same thing. They could use the liniment on their shins to help those bones, you know, uh, over time, you're going to increase the circulation in that area while mm -hmm. putting stress on that area while increasing the circulation, your bones are going to get thicker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, we're talking about you know, physical anatomy laws here. We're talking about Davis's law and Wolf's law. These are laws that talk about putting stress on tissue, you know, muscle tissue, and then also osseous tissue, bone tissue. Mm -hmm. So when you put stress on the tissues, they get stronger, they thicken, they get bigger over time. Mm -hmm. So if you're hitting your body, you know, you might see a little bit of, you know, this fascia thicken, and eventually, the, you know, the fascia over your whole torso is strengthened and mm -hmm. so when people you know want to go in and hit you I can you know take a lot more abuse than, than an untrained person I don't even blink an eye you know when mm -hmm. something hits me I don't blink I don't shirk you know I can hit myself very hard and you saw it. it's like no okay I hit myself harder when I'm training mm-hmm mm-hmm you know? but again I use the liniments I use the liniments you know 
on my arms, on my hands, and every now and then if I hit my into my torso or my ribs too much, I'll put a little, you know, a little bit more on that area. I always massage myself before and after the training because blood circulation is key. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And using the liniments brings that blood circulating, you know, ability up to its its optimal levels because it it it's very good at increasing circulation. Mm -hmm. So before we start the training, I'll put some on. Just a little bit. Why? It just kind of starts, you know, starts the motor going. Mm -hmm. And then some people, when they really get going and they're really, they're training this and they're hitting their body, okay, they'll stop halfway through and put some on just to kind of make sure they don't have any bruising after the training is over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when the training's over, I put on a third, you know, a third application just so I make sure that, you know, I'm not going to have any bruising, I'm not going to have any pain or soreness. It prevents me from having overtraining issues. So it's great mm -hmm. for anybody in any sport because, as we both know, young young athletes, they like to train. Mm -hmm. And every now and then, they're, they're going to do a little bit too much, and the next day they're going to wake up and they're going to go, oh, Lord, I can't move my torso, <laughs> or oh, I can't pick my legs up. or what, You know, mm -hmm. we've all had those days where we woke up and we went, oh, my God, I can't move. Mm -hmm. You know, and great. Get out your bottle of liniment, you know, put it on, get a nice hot shower. When you get out of the shower, put your liniment on. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the best time to, to apply these things is after you've after you've got got you know warmed the area up. Put put the liniment on. Why? The pores are open. You'll absorb more of those herbs in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we're transdermally applying a liniment that's then absorbed through the skin. A lot mm -hmm. of medications now are done this way. You see the nicotine patches. Mm -hmm. You're seeing birth control patches. Mm -hmm. You know, you're seeing more medicine put in the adhesive of something, you know, like a ba like a you know a bandage or a patch, mm -hmm. and then applied to the body, whereas the medicine is absorbed through the skin. So it's funny how the Chinese figured this out a few thousand years ago and took you know roots, berries, bark. Hey, I'm going to put the snake in here too, you know, and then boiled mm -hmm. all this stuff up, buried it, separated the liquid from the you know the herbs and the and the things and then they took the liquid and rubbed it on injuries how they figure that out it's it's interesting mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me and of course now we have things if you go to the hospital and you have a severe traumatic injury sometimes the doctor gives you this little bottle of roll on prescription drug mm -hmm. you know what it is it's something transdermally to help increase the circulation in that area help with pain help with inflammation mm. It's a dit dodge out, but it's a synthetic, you know, who God only knows what's in it. But mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, organic versus synthetic. I'm always going to steer towards the organic. There's less ability for it to cause a side effect on me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. And the only side effect you'll ever get from using liniments for me is that some people that have fair skin, you know, sometimes some of the stronger liniments, when they use it, they might get a rash, you know, because they have very sensitive skin. Mm hmm. You know, if you ever have a rash or any kind of, you know, irritation when you use these liniments, you know, wash your hands off with, with soap and water and discontinue use of that product. You could be sensitive to something that's in it or allergic to something that's in it. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of that, you know, there's a lot of plant allergies out there. So I always tell people, you know, listen to your body. If you use something and it causes irritation or a problem, don't use it. It's, you know, it's only going to make things worse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... But in, in all the years I've been making and selling this and using it on patients in the clinic, I've never had, you know, but a very few, very, you know, like, you know, a very subset of people get, you know, irritated by the, by the liniments. Most people, it, it's, it's much more dangerous for the clothes because a lot of these liniments have color. They're orangey or they're, or they're brown or black, depending mm -hmm. on the herbs you, you put in them. Mm -hmm. And if you get it on your clothing, you know, these, these have a lot of oils and alcohols, and they can actually penetrate into the dye of your clothes. And then, you know, you've got this speckled shirt or, or blouse or pair of pants. Mm -hmm. So be careful. I always say, you know, don't splash your liniment around because it's, you know, you don't want to make a Jackson Pollock painting of liniment all over the wall and all over the table and mm -hmm. all over you. you okay. know, but that's about the worst thing that can happen is you get an irritation or you, mm -hmm. you get a little, a small, weird, you know, color on your clothes mm -hmm. okay. uh, it's a very small price to pay for getting better sooner using yes. a product that's been around for you know it, it's been it's been used in china and other countries that have asian cultures for you know many years yeah um going back what type of material have uh you actually broken besides just coconuts uh usually you start out with wood so once you've done the training and the training takes about one to three years depending on you know how you want to do it but usually after the second year if you're interested 
you know, remember, iron palm isn't isn't about breaking stuff. It's just we use it as a as a gauge to see where you are in your development. You know, it's all about having stronger hands and using them in a self defense situation if that's called for. But anyway, breaking things usually we break you know pieces of wood. So you start with you know inch pine, you know, like like a ten by ten or a twelve by twelve. Mm-hmm. Put it on. Put it on. You know, usually we get cinder blocks or concrete blocks, and we put it up about waist height. Put the block. You know, put the piece of wood, and then with a palm slab, can you break that piece of wood? And usually you can. And then you know, use your palm. You know, break with break with the palm, and then break with the back of the hand. <laughs> you know, and that's a little different. There's there's a lot more muscle on the front part of your hand. Mm-hmm. You know, as you can see. You know, some of us have very meaty palms, big old bare hands. Mm-hmm. But if you look at the back of your hand, nothing at all. There's, you know, there's a little bit of covering, but you know, and, and some people their tendons stand out a lot. Mm-hmm. When you train your hands on the bag, what will happen is, as you can see with the back of my hand, is it it looks solid. Mm-hmm. You develop like a, you know, like a pad that the tissue behind here thickens a little, so you get like a little pad, a little protector. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and the same on the edge. Mm-hmm. You know, so you get these like. So my whole hand is trained. Mm-hmm. Well, start with the palm. And then, can you break a can you break a board with the back of the hand? Can you do it with a knife edge? Try all the hands, and then when you can break one, then put another board on top of that. Two boards, and use pencils. You know, spacers. Nothing bigger than a pencil. Mm-hmm. You use something bigger than a pencil, then you're cheating, and you're only breaking the first board, and then the force is just getting transferred. It's like a Jacob's ladder of force and inert, you know, it's momentum. You've created energy on top of that, you know, piece of wood, and the energy just follows because you know it's it's physics. It's just a Jacob's ladder of dun 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 dun. You know, so nothing white, nothing thicker than a pencil, and then again, palm, boom. Can you go through both boards? Can then can you do that with the back of your hand again with the knife edge? And eventually, what you want to do is, once you get the three boards, take one pencil out so you have two boards on top, you know, that are spaced, mm-hmm. and then the bottom board isn't spaced. Mm-hmm. Can you go through those? Eventually, you're just training yourself that you can take all the spacers out when you probably have like a, like an eight-inch stack, and then can you palm through that? And then can you backhand through that? Can you knife edge? Most people, you know, wood is, is, is pretty soft compared to other things. And then you go, I like to go to the block, the paver blocks. The, mm-hmm. You know, they're concrete. They have rocks and pebbles in them. And they're great. They're 2 inches by 8 inches by 16. Mm-hmm. Again, palm, boom. Usually most people can do it. Again, now you get into the, the nitty-gritty of can you use the back of your hand on a big on a piece of concrete? This isn't wood. This isn't soft. It's pretty hard. So when I use concrete blocks, I usually put like a washcloth, mm-hmm. you know, for lack of a better, you know, something, something like this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This is my, this is my training washcloth, so mm-hmm. that it's covered in dip that job. Anyway, in some of my videos, you see me put a pad on top of the blocks, and then you see me strike the pad. It actually increases the difficulty because this, you know, the pad absorbs a lot of the kinetic force. Mm-hmm. Not all of it, but it, it softens the blow. Mm-hmm. So you've got to, you know, you've got to come in a little, a little much more serious when you've got this. Anyway, I use them because I've cut my hands on concrete. Concrete's mm-hmm. kind of brittle, mm-hmm. and it'll scratch you up. Mm-hmm. So I don't like cutting myself. I hear that. And so- then from blocks, the, and then you know, sorry, but the next level is then can you break fire bricks? You know, the red hardened bricks that are really hard. They're really mm-hmm. small. Mm-hmm. Can you break those? You know, and then I think coconuts are not the pinnacle, but they're pretty hard because they're very springy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then put a coconut on the ground. Boom. You know, hit it. Most people can do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then can, can you pick it up in your hand and do the same thing? Because the ground is very hard. And you smashing your hand on the coconut, the coconut's brittle. It's much more brittle than my hand. And, you know, it breaks. But when you're holding it up, now you don't have that same, you know, it's not on the earth. It's mm-hmm. not on that solid mass. It's on this kind of springy appendage. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times you got to think if I'm going to come down with a hand, I got to come up a little with that holding hand. So if you ever see, you kind of see a meeting of the two. Mm-hmm. Okay. But the coconut's like your skull. If you can crack a coconut, yeah, you're probably not going to have a problem if you ever need it in a self-defense situation. 
mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be a self-defense situation. It's just how strong are your hands? Because if you can crack a coconut, I bet you your grip strength's very strong. Yeah, yeah. You know, and the, and the density of your hands is going to increase from this training. And if the density's increased, and the tendons are thicker, mm -hmm. and the bones are thicker because of the stress you've put on these hands for two, you know, up to two years, mm -hmm. you're going to have much stronger hands than somebody who doesn't do this training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? So, so first you got the boards, then you got the concrete, then you got the yep. red bricks, then you got the coconuts. What's after the coconuts? After that, then just start playing around. Can you, you know, uh, I broke the bottom coconut out of a stack of three, and this is in front of 300 people in Boston's Chinatown a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. We were having our Chinese New Year, and, you know, I brought a bag of coconuts. I got it like BJ's. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm not going to do any silliness and all that showmanship and sit here and breathe like I sound like I'm trying to, you know, vomit a hairball. Mm -hmm. You see these guys, you know, <sighs> and, ah. I just walked up, I had a table, I put my table down, I put the coconuts on the table, and I said, you know, guys, I'm not going to sit here and BS you. Boom! And I hit the top coconut, and the bottom coconut exploded. And a friend of mine got a, got a photograph, so this is the photograph you see. Uh -huh. you, know, you can see it on my website, and I can, sh I can share it with you, too, uh -huh. of breaking a, the bottom of three. It's just a Jacob's Ladder. I'm hitting the coconut on the top so hard that it's going through, and the bottom coconut has nowhere to go with all that kinetic energy that's been applied so it breaks yeah it's not called a Denmark technique eh, I mean Denmark there's a lot of controversy surrounding all that stuff mm -hmm. you know I mean I've seen people hit in certain places and they go down like they got shot yeah it's a, there are nerve strikes and things like that but this whole delayed death touch like you you touch somebody mm -hmm. on a certain spot and then you know three months later they're gonna die on oh, a full moon it's like oh, that's, <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of silly all right. What about the Dillman techniques? That those are, you know, he's hitting real points. You know, and acupuncture points are 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 points near nerve plexuses. So he, it's a nerve technique. Mm -hmm. You're hitting mm -hmm. nerves. I mean, it's not like you're just hitting nowhere and you know you're causing people to you know go into convulsions. There are you know certain places that you can neurologically set up people to have you know problems. In other words, you're overloading their CNS by striking into these nerve plexuses so quickly mm -hmm, that the mm -hmm. body can't the body can't deal with the stress and so you your body goes we're going to reboot and you know you vasodilate your blood drops to your feet and you get very faint and you can fall down mm -hmm. you know and a lot, one of those famous nerve techniques is here in the neck okay your carotid sinus nerve is in here it's between the you know it's in the carotid the carotid artery and the and your jugular vein, and mm -hmm. it's a it's a big nerve plexus. And if you mm -hmm. if you activate that nerve, it tells your brain you're having a heart attack. What do you okay. do when you're having a heart attack? Your body will vasodilate. It'll open up all the blood vessels as as wide as they can. Your blood will drop down. Your blood pressure will drop, and you will fall down. And you you know some people it, they'll, they'll sink. They'll have sink and be. They'll faint. You know they have mm -hmm. loss of consciousness. So it can be very serious. Okay, it's, let me see if I can go back to this. So this is the one, uh, Robert. Can you get a? Yeah, um, go ahead and play it from there. Yeah. Yeah. Minimize it. I mean, yeah. Take it back now. Okay. Uh, since it's, well, go ahead. Hit play. Hit play. All right. Let's go back. But well, this is a video of him uh, breaking those three coconuts, right here, and we're gonna watch him do the video uh, breaking coconut. But this is one where he bought the uh, hit the three coconuts and the bottom one exploded. Right? Can you see that, Dale? Yeah, it's uh, this was taken by a friend of mine. I asked him. I just said, "Hey, just take a take some photos for me, you know, when I get up there." And he, I couldn't have paid to have a better shot taken. And this was just done by a friend of mine, a training brother. Mm -hmm. And this is like I said, this is done in front of a large audience of people, so people can say, "Oh, I, I never you know that never happened." No, actually, yeah, I did, and people were there, and you know, they can they can verify it. It's easily verified. Oh, okay, that's cool. A lot of people yeah. think about the tricks. Now, here we're going to go to your video right quick. And we're going oh, to, Lord. Yeah, the, the infamous video. <laughs> <laughs> now, Make sure you um, explain what's going on. Pull okay. Oh, it's an error. Uh-oh. Uh, somebody didn't pay their YouTube bill. I didn't know it was a YouTube bill to be paid. <laughs> Uh, like, oh, nobody don't want the secrets out. Oh. Did somebody complain about my stuff? I, I have a lot uh, of haters please. out there. Please, yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, you do. So too bad we won't get to see the video. That is. Well, hold on. Let me. Uh, I'm hey, looking. 
I'm looking on YouTube at my, because, you know, I'm the controller, I'm the owner, so it should be here. Right. Yeah, go back to the L, see if it pulls, pulls okay, back out. Let's see. Well, that might have been a net, network error. Okay. You see what it says YouTube right there? Click on that. Go to the main page of YouTube. YouTube? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so on this video, we actually get go. to watch. Oh. Get past the advertisement. Well, four, four, three, two, one. All right, we're actually on it. Now I'm going to expand it. Oh, oh, all right. Oh, again. We're gonna ask you on the vid. We're gonna watch him break some more coconuts. That I just I just sent you the link. I don't know if you can click on it. <laughs> In the text, it's a, it's from my YouTube page. Okay. Oh, now I'm showing numbers. And it's playing on my YouTube page right now. Uh, they don't they don't want us to put out the secrets for these athletes out here to excel. <laughs> Does it work? Does the link work to take you to the video? You sent it to uh, SirBroadcast.com. I just right here. Support. I did it in the little text window that's you know next to the video that we're like, that I'm looking at with you. Okay, hold on. No, we still have the same problem. Yeah, we still got really? the same problem. I'm yeah. sorry about that. It's okay. It's okay. It happens. You know, anybody who just want to see the video again, go through the uh, Dale. Just Google Dale Dugas coconut breaking YouTube and you'll be able to see him break the coconuts using his hands and breaking the coconut and putting it on the thing. It's very impressive let's demonstration. See if I I might, let me see. Okay, if you do just go ahead and play it and just let me know. But uh, the only reason that I actually pull up that video is for athletes especially it's for them to have the out uh, that for you to if you're listening is for athletes to have the ideal of the type of power that you can cultivate for yourself within a one to three year period of time with arm palm training that you be able to use against your opponent and uh, also it just makes your hands stronger catch stuff or whatever you know so uh, sometimes if you want to get better an athlete if any athletic sport whatever athletic sport that you participate in uh, once you master everything that everybody else is doing, you got to think outside of the box, okay? You got to say, what other things is out there that I can add to what I'm doing in order for me to be the best at my sports? And you find somebody who can do something, who can actually show you, who can demonstrate a skill, and you be like, oh, okay, well, how can I cross-change, uh, how can I cross-train that, pull that into what I'm doing, to become even better and there was one I was reading um, Dale's um, log today and he was uh, what was you uh, doing you was holding concrete blocks or doing some type of exercise with it yeah there's a lot of things where I'm training grip strength so I grab onto things and hold on to them and pick them up drop them mm -hmm. you know uh, grab them again so and I have a bag it's a bag just a canvas bag full of ball bearings and I toss it up mm -hmm. I catch it you know, and so I squeeze it, mm -hmm. you know, and then I, I flip it up. So if you see what I'm doing, mm -hmm. All right, I'm guys, flipping. I got it. Okay, go ahead and play it. All right, stand by. Death to coconuts. You're so crazy. <laughs> well, when I post up stuff and people post a link up, people go, why are you so mean to the coconuts? What did it ever do to you? And I'm like, <laughs> well, no, I'm just hitting it. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to hurt it. Uh, it's a coconut for freak's sake. It's It's a seed. <laughs> it's just a Hello, my name is Dale Dugas. I'm an acupuncturist herbalist as well as a kung fu teacher here in Hanover, Massachusetts. Today, I'm going to be doing some coconut breaking. I've had some requests, and I'm going to be doing a break in the hand as well as a break on a support. Uh, for more information on iron palm training, iron body training, the kung fu training that I provide here, please call me at 781-829-9355. I teach Tai Chi on Tuesday evenings, Wednesday and Friday mornings. Wednesday evenings, I teach South Mantis Kung Fu. Thank you. And without further ado, Let's break some coconuts. Now, just to show you, this is in the netting. I just got it from the store. You can hear it. Okay? It's in the netting. I just bought it at the store down the street. What I'm going to do is going to be breaking this in my hand. It's broken. He's actually breaking coconuts with your bare hand. I tried that doing that at Walmart. <laughs> oh, God. 
Walmart. It hurts. Now I'm gonna try a hammer fist. From this South one Manus. was dry, gotcha. so I just it just broke. That's a good way to test to see if that a coconut's good. That one was didn't have a lot of liquid in it. It was kind of dry. Yeah, it was dry. It was brittle, so it broke very easily. <laughs> now, of course, you look behind now me. I'll do one on a that's, that's snow banks. That's a few years ago. <laughs> I'm uh, breaking out my cold. Yeah, this is a table, an iron pond training table that my kung fu brother Bob Mayo that makes. Not been in He's located in Merrimack, New no. Hampshire. No, uh, this is Massachusetts. This is my hometown where I grew up. And again, it's in the netting. There's a seam here. This might be a little easier to break. Easy. Should have made coconut pie or something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> That's so easy. Now, a lot of people ask me why I show that video so much. Why I share that video? Uh, why I share that video so much? I've been martial arts for 20 years. See people break uh, boards and see people break concrete blocks, and I don't care. Uh, and I, I said I really don't care what people got to say. Break it. I done broke some concrete blocks. I done broke. Uh, some, breaking coconuts are hard. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. Yeah. I said, I'm impressed. That's why a lot of people, yeah. for them, it's it's the the pinnacle of their breaking, you know, because blocks and boards and bricks are pretty brittle. Right. Coconut, you know, it's got that liquid inside and it's very springy. You know, you mm. you hit it and it kind of will rebound back. So you really have to be able to penetrate very quickly, very hard, you know, and just not let it spring. And then mm -hmm. you you see what happens. It mm -hmm. cracks. They break. You know, liquid comes out. Yeah, I mean, me, uh, me, me, myself. I'm five foot eight, and um, I played some football a little bit, you know, growing up. And I studied arm palm, you know, but just a little minor stuff, and up uh, for board breaking and stuff. Cause we kung fu, whatever. So when I hit someone, I push somebody off me. I throw a little something, something into it, and they can feel it. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. you know, I'm a small dude. I'm only like five eight. So I'm like, for any, I'm looking at these professional athletes and stuff out here. And, um, you know, if I'm like, you know something, if they got to your skill level, they could really make a super leap in their performance as okay. far as getting people off of them and, you know, uh, when they're running and stuff. So I'm looking I'm like, hey, you know, I'm like um, throwing a few, you know, unique skills your way. If you're listening, just give it a try and see what happens. And just a couple of months, you'll notice a big difference in holding your balls, holding things yeah. and all that other because your muscles and everything will actually be uh strength but the secret is is the dead dial <laughs> yeah. you can you the can dodge out the you know the training liniments because it's you know you can hit yourself mm -hmm. and yeah you're you're gonna have you know whatever but if you if you keep hitting yourself over a long time and you're not using some kind of medicinal liniment to help heal because you know when you hit yourself and you drop your hands on things and you hit you know you hit the sled you know, football players, they're training, they hit those sleds. Well, you're hitting it with what? Your shoulder? There you go. Well, there you guess go. what? Your shoulder, you're getting those little micro, like a micro fracture right. in the bones. Because, there we go. you know, bang, you're hitting something really hard. What are they quickly. putting on it? They don't, so, they don't put nothing on it. Yeah, and people don't put anything on it. And then, you know, over time, you get arthritis, you get rheumatism. I the Chinese go, no, no. I'm going to train the bone, but I'm going to put this liquid on it, mm -hmm, and I'm not mm -hmm, going to have those mm -hmm, problems. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. or or my problems are going to be extremely minimal compared to somebody who does not do that mm -hmm, and has a much a much you know worse situation. You know, worse meaning in other words, they didn't take care of themselves when they were training, and now now they're paying the price because many many retired athletes pay the price with their health. Right, and I'm like, I prevention. Like, prevention could prevent, you know, could prevent them. It's funny. Prevention could prevent hard, hard. Mm -hmm, prevention mm -hmm. could help them mitigate their health issues now if they did it back then. So for me, it's more education to help people say, hey, look, you're going to live longer and have a better career if you take care of it now than if you just don't and you tough it out and be the old tough guy. Mm -hmm. And I was telling, you like, know, try that dip down on your feet for your ankles and for your feet after ankles, running feet, and stuff. Ankles, feet, chins, yeah. knees. You put it everywhere. I mean. No joke, back in the old days, they talk about martial artists who had like a hot tub full of it, you know, a tub full of exactly. it. Exactly. And they would submerge themselves up to their face because they were hit, you know, on their back, you know, on their body, on their torso, on their legs. And so they would just soak in this stuff because they thought, you know what, rather than rub it all over, I'm just going to go sit in a, in a tub of this stuff mm -hmm. and get the same effect. Mm -hmm. you know, that is but so hot tubs are great. Not jacuzzi. Well, jacuzzi are okay, but hot water. Getting in hot water increases circulation. So that's you know a benefit right then and there. 
You know, that's why I like to use the liniments after you get out of the bath or after you get out of the shower. You're warm, your circulation's been increased. Slap that liniment on your problem area, rub it in, and then, you know, there you go. That is so true. That is so true. Easy to use, and the benefits of use far outweigh, you know, smelling like curry. Because, you know, people say, oh, okay. gee, I smell like curry. Well, yeah, you do, but I would rather smell like curry than smell like, you know, something else. Right. So this is what I was, uh, we was I was talking to Rick Panico yeah. about this. Uh, could you show this picture right quick, Robert? Yeah. Yeah, we have a, a Nix uh, forward, a Mars, Stomar takes a bath from Red Y. Which purportedly he talks about to that increase the circulation to get over the yep. healing and stuff like yep. that, and I'm like, and he said he threw some herbs in this wine, and I'm like, this guy knew about did thou? Okay, yep. he knew about did. He knows about. They say it's just red wine. I'm telling, you, it's not. It, it's more like it's alcohol. not just alcohol. In, right. In Chinese medicine, alcohol disperses. So if he's sitting in alcohol. His skin is absorbing it. Now, of course, he's not absorbing. You know, it's it's weak. It's not like hard liquor. Mm -hmm. If that was a if that was a tub full of vodka or whiskey, he might get a little drunk because his body's going to absorb that high amount of alcohol. But wine is only what ten or fifteen percent. It's pretty mm -hmm. low mm -hmm. alcohol, but it's still alcohol, and your your skin's going to absorb it. And what does alcohol do? Alcohol induces circulation. Mm -hmm. So it's going to make his blood move everywhere. So he's going to get more blood, more oxygen throughout his body without taking mm -hmm. oxygen because we we all know that in many sports, taking oxygen is you know <laughs> on the do not you know do not do list because it's a performance enhancer. Right. So I'm but like you can do it by soaking you know deep breathing and soaking in a tub full of alcohol. Guess what? Goodness. Yeah, you're going to hyperoxygenate your body because you're going to increase the circulation. Mm -hmm. And if you do deep breathing with that. You know, it's just math. It is increase in circulation, more air in your lung. Okay, your body's gonna have more oxygen, you know, than if you didn't do it. Yeah, so that's why when people ask me what's the benefits of these videos and stuff like this, I'm going yeah. back to your website. But when people ask me, ask me what's the benefits of the vi uh, of doing about the dit Dow martial arts, I'm telling you that other people are using this information that we talk about, but they're just not letting everybody in on the secret. No, you know, and it's funny because in China, you know, they taught a lot of Japanese and Okinawan people how to train their bodies and their hands. Well, guess what? A lot of systems, they said, you know, hey, is there any medicine? Ah, oh, no, just go punch that tree until your hands get stronger. <laughs> so they kind of, you know, eh, you know, I think it was like revenge from all the colonization that Japan had done. You know, they did anyway. We we won't get into history and and dig dig up bad feelings, but you know. If you look at exactly. Japanese martial arts, they yes. bang on stuff, but they don't use, use medicine, and they have problems. They have Off issues. They have health yes. issues. They have joint issues. Nobody lets them in on the secret. You know, so the secret is, hey, this little bottle of liquid, I'm mm -hmm. going to put this on before, during, and after my training, and this is going to you know, prevent me from having injuries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, my hands are not calloused, alligator skin nastiness. They're very smooth, and they're soft like babies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I can make my hands solid when I have to by tensing the muscles in the hands, the muscles in the tendons, mm -hmm. and making a solid mass that you know hits whatever I'm eating. Okay. Well, let's go over your tiger. Let's go over all your uh, dead dolls and stuff. Sure. You know, uh, first one that was just on the website that she says the bestseller is uh, Tiger Exit the Forest Liniment. What's that all about? It is. Um, you know, when I was coming up with marketing, I, I thought. You know, come up with names that will brand you, that people will remember. So, the Tiger Eggs the Forest is one of a you know uh, a collection of formulas that came you know over from China. It's it's actually a version of what they call the Ho family formula. The Ho family had this injury formula, and it was well known on the West Coast, you know, because of the Chinese immigrants, you know, at the turn of the century were coming over to you know help build and you know create the country and do what they did. Mm -hmm. So this formula has been around for a while. It's been tweaked. I liked it so much, and I like the aggressiveness of the formula. It's very strong, and it works on joint injuries. It's great for bumps and bruises, you know, chronic acute. It, it's just a really good formula. It smells great. It doesn't, you know, uh, you know, smell like, you know, if, if it doesn't smell good, people aren't going to use it. In compliance, you need to use it. You know, it's not going to work if you don't use it. Mm -hmm. So anyway, it just happens, hey, it's really strong, and it, works and it just happens to have a very good aroma because of the, the formulation mm -hmm. and so you know I named it Tiger Eggs of the Forest it comes from the name of a form from the white eyebrow system which is a very high level it's, it's like the, the most advanced form 
is called the ferocious tiger exits the forest, mm -hmm. which is called Mang Mang Fu Chitman in in Cantonese. Well, I like the tiger eggs the forest, so I said, you know what? This this is so strong and kind of in your face. I want to call it tiger eggs the forest, and so I started calling it that. And then people ask, hey, I, I need more tiger eggs, so it's become the it's become the name, the brand. You know, it's become you know a moniker mm -hmm. in and of mm -hmm. itself, mm -hmm. and it's great for joint injuries. It increases circulation wherever you apply it. So we all know shoulders, elbows, wrists, knees, mm -hmm. ankles, mm -hmm. hips. We have these connective tissues in the joints that when you injure them because they have a bad they don't have a bad they, they have a very low level of circul you know circulation compared to muscles mm -hmm. so because they have poorer circulation than your muscles they take longer to heal because mm -hmm. you need to increase circulation in the area of injury you know to help you know get rid of dead blood cells other mm -hmm. things and get fresh blood in that area well it just goes to show you that if you use something that increases circulation and apply it to that area, hey, guess what? It's going to heal faster. Mm -hmm. It's not magic. Adding herbs to help with pain, you know, and other things, you know, up and beyond, you know, increasing blood circulation. Hey, you're getting, you know, added benefits. So having all these things in the same place, mm -hmm. I can just apply the, I can apply the liquid on my muscles, on my joints. It doesn't matter. It's going to get absorbed through your skin. It's going to do its job, which mm -hmm. is to, you know, decrease pain, increase circulation in the area. You know, thicken the bones. Mm -hmm. You know, thicken your tendons, depending on what kind of formula it is, because there's different formulas for different things. Mm -hmm. We have what we call hand training formulas. In other words, doing the iron palm training and hitting bags or poking your fingers into things or gripping, you know, various tools, you know, and, and lifting things up with your fingers. When you strength train these programs, you're going to need a training liniment that's very strong on your hands, and you want to make sure that the tendons of your hands and arms are getting a much, much more increased circulation because you want to make sure they're not getting injured. Mm -hmm. So we put more herbs for tendons and ligaments, you know, in those liniments. Mm -hmm. When you have an injury liniment, you have the pain-killing herbs. They're usually in a ratio much higher than a hand training formula because in hand training, you're not hurting yourself. Mm -hmm. But you want to make sure you've got enough, you know, yeah, you got a little bit of pain herbs in there just in case, you, you know, you wing yourself or, you know, you, you screw up and you bang you know, the wrong part of your hand, you're like, ow, mm -hmm. you know, it happens, Thing, you know, you, you walk by a door and you whack your hand on the door, you know, on the door jam, ow, you know, mm -hmm. things like that, little dings, you know, just put some, again, we put this medicine on our hands, mm -hmm. but Tiger, Tiger, you know, I sold, oh my God, you know, gallons, you know, all over the world, I've shipped this all over the world, you name it, I've shipped it to the Middle East, I've shipped it to, you know, military post boxes, you know, I had friends in the military, they like this formula, so they had a box of it shipped to them, and then they they used it with their you know with their crew because you know they needed it. You know they're getting beat up, you know kicking in doors, running around, you know mm -hmm. having people shoot at you. Mm -hmm. It takes its toll on your body. So have again having something you can apply in the field in a little bottle that's you know mm -hmm. portable. Hey, guess what? You know, it, it, so it's funny how we're looking at something that's you know used in a tactical situation, but then we can take it and putting it into a sports situation mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. sports is a tactical situation in and of itself. It's mm -hmm. just it's not so you know permanent and serious compared mm -hmm. to you know a war situation. Mm -hmm. But again, it doesn't matter. It's it, putting stress on your body, beating your body up. You mm -hmm. need to take care of your body, or you're going to have your body bite you in the behind, and mm -hmm. you're you know mm -hmm. you're going to have problems, mm -hmm. you know that have to be corrected sometimes with surgery. Mm -hmm. So why not use these liniments, you know, in a preventative method, and keep you know and, and preserve your joints, preserve you know, and make sure that you you know you get back to you know, your sport much faster than if you did not do anything mm -hmm. and had to take mm -hmm. time off, you know, for rehab, for therapy, and to deal with, you know, traumatic injury. Because, you're, you're, again, the tissues, you know, maybe maybe the, the joint wasn't injured, but because you injured the muscles all around your joint, guess what? You can't play because there's a risk of your joint, you know, you might, you might you know, get dislocated shoulder or something. You know, but if you can get this, this area, hey, three, four days, hey, guess what? Those muscles feel a hell of a lot better, and I'm not dealing, I don't feel... You know what mm -hmm. I did felt mm -hmm. before. Hey, guess what? Great. Mm -hmm. Not magic. It's just it's you increase blood circulation, you increase healing time. Mm -hmm. okay. It's a correlation. So whatever can in increase your circulation, guess what? That's going to help you heal. That's so true. sitting in a tub full of red wine with herbs, yep, it's going to help. Yeah. Basically, he sat himself and did that job. He put herbs That's in the wine, uh -huh. and I assume heated it up, you know, uh -huh. a little bit because you know uh -huh. sitting in cold red wine, how ah, it's you know that's that's. 
that hey, whatever whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? Right. <laughs> I you believe know? But he was using up. an external. He was basically doing a like a hot tub full of jow. He put uh, herbs in wine uh -huh. and soaked in it. And that's what we do. We take wine. We, you know, my liniments are cooked. They're a little different. They're you know, when you get into liniments, you can what they do call cold soaking. In other words, you just take the herbs, you put it in alcohol, mm -hmm. you put it in a container. Mm -hmm. You know, you put herbs in a container. Mm -hmm. You can see the liquid in there. Anyway. You can let it sit for a period of time, and then you strain out the herbs, you keep the liquid, and then you take the liquid and apply it, again, wherever it hurts. They call that a cold soak liniment. Mm -hmm. Now, you can take the same herbs, put them in a big pot of wine, bring the wine up to boil, simmer the herbs, take it off the heat and let it sit overnight, and I cover it up with towels. This is how I make my liniments. Mm -hmm. I make a base, a base foundation, and then I take that, I add ethanol in to preserve it, I take that finished product and let it sit for a stipulated period of time. Mm. There's other processes involved too. So there's a lot. My my liniments are very hands-on. They're very. They're not simple cold soak liniments. Mm -hmm. I put a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of uh, love into mm -hmm. these things, for mm -hmm. lack of a better term. Okay. What about the black hand? Now the black hand is is a hand training formula. When I say hand training, we're talking about iron palm. But you can use it for karate or boxing. In other words, anybody that's hitting their hands against something mm -hmm. you know in an iron palm usually it's a bag it's a bag full of beans a bag full of rocks a bag full of you know bb's and you're taking your hand and you're you're hitting the bag with you know the various hand positions in karate they're usually taking their knuckles and they're usually using these first two knuckles and they're hitting a post mm -hmm. and the post you know moves a little and there's a pad on the post and again they want to develop these knuckles mm-hmm so black hand is great for, for karate people, you know, that are interested, that want to learn, you know, hey, you can train your fists and you, you don't have to hurt yourself and you don't have to have arthritis. Mm -hmm. You just have to use a, a training liniment and that'll mitigate a lot of your problem. Mm -hmm. But again, it's all about progressive safe training. Too many of these people, you've seen them, they've got hands that don't work, they've got knuckles that, you know, they look like ping pong balls or golf balls were stuffed under the skin. Mm -hmm. You know, they've got this, this useless claw, but mm -hmm. they can stick it through your head. Okay, mm -hmm. great. You can stick it through your head, but it, it's useless. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. How so does the black for hand me to ruin my body to have a useless appendage? It, it, it does me no no good. That is so true. How is you the know, so we're thinking you know healthy, strong, conditioned. You know, okay. That's, those are the words I'm always talking about to my students. You know, is you want to you want to be you want to be healthy. You want to strengthen your body. You know the whole body, and you want to be strong, but you don't want to be debilitating or, or causing injury to yourself. Okay, so the tiger exits the forest is general for everything, and the black hand is if you want to uh, really do some damage with your hands. You know, for boxers, you know, for you know, arm wrestler guys, because they're putting mm -hmm. a lot of pressure on their hands and squeezing somebody's hand. Mm -hmm. Black hand would be great for anybody into arm wrestling or for anybody that's dealing with holding on to something. Like what about weight training? Weight training, yeah, great for weight training because a lot of times you're picking up bars and your hands are getting sore, especially when you start putting heavier weights on the bar because the bar then presses into your hands. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people get like bruising across their palms. That's true. So if you're getting bruised because you're, you know, you're benching or you're lifting or deadlifting mm -hmm. or whatever, you're picking up heavy weights, these, are, these liniments are great to make sure that your hands are not being affected. Or if you're squatting and putting that bar but, you know, on your shoulders and your shoulders are getting sore, because the weight, you know, the weight's irritating that area. Again, slap some of this stuff on. It's great for training. Well, if you got you know, small great, wrists. Great for lifting, you know, you whether small before, wrist. during, yeah. or again, during or after. You know, you overwork an area. Say you're going to do wrist curls. Mm -hmm. And you finish your routine and you can't, you know, you can't open your close your hands because, you know, your forearms are on fire. Mm -hmm. Hey, slap some, you know, slap some liniment. It's great for overtraining and, and helping muscles relax that get very sore. Mm-hmm. You know, it helps get rid of lactic acid. Why? Because you're increasing the circulation in that area by applying the liniment. So liniment use, you're going to see decrease in pain, decrease in inflammation, and decrease in lactic acid built up. What's a pre-made so, Fujian? Fujian is just, it, Fujian's a province in China, but it's a formula that comes from the supposed uh, Fujian Shaolin Temple in the south. Mm -hmm. It's a very old formula, and it's really great. It's one of those formulas that kind of does, you know, it's kind of a cross formula. You can use it for injuries. You can use it for iron hand training. You can use it for iron arm training. Mm -hmm. You know, training training your forearms. That you know, the, 
we talk about three-star training where you hit your arm three times against either a pole or another person and you're training the arm to accept abuse. This would be great for defensive tackles or for anybody on the line that's got to come up and deal with another big, huge behemoth in front of them. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, this guy's going to try to run me over. I need to give him something to, you know, to think about. So having a stronger arm and the ability to get hit in your arms, you know, Mm -hmm. guess mm -hmm. what? You can take those pads off because, you know, you can take you can take a hit or two on the arms. Okay. You know, less pads, less pads, always going to be better for you. You're going to be more mobile. Okay, well, let's give a shout-out. Let's go back to Black Hand and give a shout-out sure. to, uh, who is it, presented by Coiling Dragon Herbs? Yeah, I used to be Coiling Dragon Herbs, you know, and What's I changed it? my name again for branding. Yeah. A lot of people, there were some competitors who were having similar names, something with the word dragon in it, so I just thought, you know what, to distance myself from all these people, Mm -hmm. who are not me, none, and most of the people in the in the dit dot job business, they're not licensed herbalists or acupuncturists. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been training for, you know, since I was a kid, and I'm almost 50, so I've got, you know. Who's the Iron Lotus Society? Iron Lotus is, they're my friends, um, a collection of people down in the Kentucky area who do iron palm training, iron body training, and so we got together because they wanted, you know, real strong formulas, and they had been ripped off by other people, these yeah. supposed herbalists and, and, you know, martial art herb people. Mm -hmm. They basically took their money and gave them something that wasn't even worth a third of what they paid for. Mm -hmm. And the, I had been on, on one of the forums and talking about, hey, you know, there's a lot of processing involved and, you know, certain herbs have to be treated and done, you know, and, and processed and then added in at a later time. Anyway, there's a lot of, you know, art to, you know, herbs especially training herbs. One of the guys in the Iron Lotus Society is a guy named Rod Morgan, and he, he contacted me, and I said, hey, send me what you bought, and I will treat the herbs and send them back to you. I expected to get a big, huge bag of herbs mm -hmm. in the mail because he said he had this one formula. Mm -hmm. Well, what I got in the mail were these two little sandwich bags full of herbs, and it wasn't even worth 10 bucks. And this, this, and Rod had said he paid like over a hundred dollars for these two little bags. And I'm going. I called him up and I said, "What's going on here? Did you? Is this a joke?" Mm -hmm. and he said, "No, that's what they sold me." I'm going, "Dude, let me send you the herbs." So I, I filled the formula, and it was about a five pound bag of herbs. Mm -hmm. And I sent him this, and he called me up, and he was very, he was very upset. He got, he, he got emotional. Wow. Because he goes, "Is this the formula?" I go, "Yeah, this is the formula. You but you should have been sold as the formula." from that other supplier, but he got totally hoodwinked by this guy. Right. So there's a, there's a lot of charlatans and fakes and frauds, and they, they claim to be long-term martial art teachers. And some of these guys, they, you know, they haven't been training that long. You know, they're not Iron Palm teachers. They haven't been training Iron Palm very long. And it's evident in, you know, how they interact and how they, and, you know, you can tell if somebody's got, well, have you, you know, ever checked out what they do. Yeah, because when you put in a dit dow uh, for dit dow formula, dit dow training, the first site that actually comes up is the one that's called dit dow jaw, and they yep. have a training hall, arm palm, and first stage use the Shaolin dit dow jaw, we need twelve meridian balancer internal formula for the first year. I mean, actually pretty good because they talk about arm palm, arm fist, arm fingers, arm arm, and they actually yep. got the training, but. My only problem is is that when I actually go to contact and try to find out who the people are who's teaching you, I don't come up with nothing. Yeah, there's a lot of people that do that, you know? Yeah, so that's what I don't like. But see, with you, I actually have a real person that, yes. you know, that I yep. can talk to and all that other type yep. of stuff. And that's why, you know, I have you on the show instead of somebody else. You're credible. You're an acupuncturist. And um, you just do, you know, I mean, you, you're there. But uh, let's go on to the next because the whole point of this uh, is to go over stuff that we don't understand. Why do we use yeah. fish oil again? Fish oil is an anti-inflammatory. It acts like aspirin. You know, you take aspirin for you know inflammation and for pain. You know, fish oil being a food, your body's going to absorb it. You know, a lot easier. It's easier on your system. It doesn't cause stomach ulcers because you take a lot of aspirin or acids. Mm -hmm. It can it can cause you know stomach or digestive issues over time. So fish oil is great. Inflammation, it's a natural blood thinner, so it's going to help you with any kind of inflammation. Or, and, and then over the long run, it's good for your heart health and it's good for brain health because mm -hmm. your brain is made up of fatty acids. So the fatty acids in the fish oil mm -hmm. will 
you know, help you be, you know, brain healthy. So it'll help your hormones because your brain makes a lot of hormones. And if your brain is healthy and has the fat it needs to eat, you, it's good. Okay. So fish oil, fish oil, really good supplement. Okay. Why you got Black Hand Closed Door Advanced anyway? Well, it's just uh, Black Hand, the formula is a closed door formula. And so what, what that means is it's, it wasn't a public formula. Mm -hmm. You know, and this was something that, you know, again, you hear talk about public formulas, closed door. You mm -hmm. were a public student. You were a closed door. Closed door meaning private. Mm -hmm. So some of the formulas were not just given out. They were, you know, you, you, the teacher gave you a bottle of the liniment and said, here, this is this. And you bought it from him. Well, he didn't tell you what was in it because it's his livelihood. It's, you know, they mm -hmm. talk about the rice bowl. It's his rice bowl. You don't want to break your teacher's rice bowl. Then he's going to have trouble eating. Mm -hmm. So, but... Mm -hmm. Secrecy and all this stuff. Eh, it, 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 life is short. I want to make Ooh. friends. I want to help people. And the black hand is a great formula for training. Okay, it's, one more. So I use it, and other yeah. people buy it and use it. You know? We got uh, five more minutes, uh, so we're okay. gonna try to get two more. This Guo sure. What is ghost hand? Ghost hand. Guo Xiao. Guo is ghost, and Xiao is hand. So this is just again another another formula that came through a different system. And then kind of they wanted to make like a super formula, you know, because they wanted to make a formula that was good for anything, for training, for iron training, you know, had the bone strengthening herbs, had all the pain killing herbs, the blood circulation herbs of an injury formula, but had all the attributes of a hand training or an iron palm formula. So they put them all together and it's just a big, you know, big formula. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people like those formulas. Again, it's like, it's like drinking. You know, some people like to drink, you know, lemonade. Some people drink to like, you know, sweet tea. Some people like iced tea that's not sweet. Jiao, ditta jiao is the same. Some people like a certain formula. It speaks to them. It works for them. Great. Mm. You know, other people, they try certain formulas that their friends use, and they go, eh. Mm -hmm. And not then more, they go, hey, I found this formula from this guy, you know, and depending, you know, again, oh I'm not God. saying I have the best ditta jiao or anything like that. I'm just, I'm just out there. I'm very public about it, you know, but there are some great, people that make some okay, great okay, products. Okay, 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 so we only got four minutes. What is, the I know, I know. what is the difference about poison hand or ghost hand? Now, poison hand is another name for an advanced iron palm. In other words, you were hitting somebody and you were actually putting poison in their skin because the theory was you soak your hand in this jowl made from poisons. Mm -hmm. You know, snake venom, you know, wow. ant venom, hornet venom, spider venom, scorpion venom, you know, mm -hmm. centipede venom. You'd soak, and then you would soak your hands before you went out and fought. Well, guess what? Your hands are coated in this poison that you've been using for, you know, a long time. You, you take an antidote. You don't die. Well, mm -hmm. guess what? You whack somebody on their open skin. Mm -hmm. You can put that medicine. You can drive it into their skin. In other words, you're driving the poison into their wow. body because your skin absorbs. Well, guess what? They die from the poison. They don't have the antidote that you do. Poison hand. And ghost you know, the hand? Black hand? The black hand was talking is similar. The black hand is when you hit somebody and you leave a black handprint on them. Mm -hmm. You know, black hand. <laughs> and ghost hand? And ghost hand, you got hit, there's no marks anywhere. That you got hit, there's no black handprint, but you're, you're, you're passing blood because they hit you so hard it went inside and did damage without leaving any marks on the outside. Hence the term ghost. In other words, you can't see them. You know, ghost hand. Wow, that is so yeah. super. I love those. So old, it's it's yeah. it's just interesting how they use, again, it, it, it probably was some marketing too. Uh-huh. You know? Uh -huh. A certain teacher, hey, he's got the ghost hand. Oh, that guy's got the black hand. Oh, he's got he's got the granite hand. You know, there's there's a little bit of marketing involved because uh -huh. you know you want to brand it. Uh, you know? that's you know, interesting. Like master so and so, he's got he's got the steel hand. You know, whatever. And, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> how do yeah? How do people get in contact with you again? You can find me on the internet. I'm at dalegusherbs.com. That is my herbal website. You can also find me at dalegus.com. Um, you can Google me. You can, you know, call me at 813-237-0350. Again, that's 813-237-0350. Or you can email me at herbs, that's H-E-R-B-S, at com. Super. And you also do online Skype classes. I do online training. You know, I do mentoring in herbs, you know, ditta herbs, trauma herbs. If you're already a licensed acupuncturist or herbalist who wants a little bit you know, more hands-on training with this stuff, let me know. I, again, I'm here to help. Let me know what I can do, you know, to be of service to people, you know, looking for, you know, better health, better strength, and, you know, a longer career in whatever sport they do. Super. 
All right, okay, everyone, have a wonderful night. This is Malik L. Train, host of Health Awareness Talk, with my guest today, Mr. Dale Dugas, Arm Palm Master. Everyone, good night.